Hello, today's story is called Discovery and Danger on the Prairie. Our learning objectives for today are to explain how Lewis and Clark prepared for their expedition, describe Lewis and Clark's encounters with Native Americans, demonstrate an understanding of the word honored, record information about the tasks Lewis and Clark have accomplished, and then use a graphic organizer to record information about the tasks that they accomplished so far. Our key vocabulary this time are guided, honored, and prairie. Guided is a verb and it means led. The dog guided the lost children back to their home. This is a seeing eye dog and he or she is in, uh, guided their owners, okay? They guide their owners. Honored is a verb and it means admired and respected. The kind man was honored at a special ceremony for his generosity to the school. Prairie is a noun and a prairie is a large flat area of land covered in grass. The grass on the prairie waved as the wind blew. Okay, I would like for you to please find, oopsie, the Atlantic Ocean, oopsie, the Atlantic Ocean, right over here. How about the Appalachian Mountains? Right here. The Mississippi River, right about here. How about the Rocky Mountains? Right over here. What about the Louisiana Purchase? The land that was between the Rocky Mountains and the Mississippi River. How about the Missouri River? The Missouri River came through the Louisiana Purchase, okay? From the Mississippi River through the um, Louisiana Purchase to the Rocky Mountains. And what about the Pacific Ocean? Right here. Okay, in today's read aloud, um, we are going to be talking about the part of the United States that we now call the Great Plains, okay? While not a lot of pioneer families who lived in the United States traveled into the Louisiana Territory, many Native Americans had already been living there for a really long time. All right, thinking back to our last read aloud, what did Lewis and Clark do to prepare or get ready for their expedition? Let's see. They had to find a crew, right, to work with them. They had to pack things. What kinds of things did they pack? Clothes, journals. Uh, they had to pack all of their stuff into the boats that they were going to be in, right? And they had to make sure that they knew how to hunt and how to fish and how to build shelters, okay? Remember our key vocabulary for today, we have guided, honored, and prairie. I want you to listen carefully to find out which two tasks Lewis and Clark will have an opportunity to accomplish and whether or not they are going to be successful. On July 19th, 1804, William Clark found himself at the edge of an ocean. It was not the Pacific Ocean, the vast sea to the west that Clark and his friends had hoped to reach. In fact, it was not an ocean of water at all. It was a large, flat area of land covered in grass called a prairie. A prairie is also called a grassland. Remember the grassland habitat that we learned about in the animals and habitats? That's what this is. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a prairie goes, as far, goes on as far as the eye can see, just like the ocean. So the prairie looked like an ocean because it went on as far as the eye could see, just like the ocean seems to do it when you look at it, okay? Clark was out hunting for the expedition and spotted some elk tracks, which he followed up the hill. He later described what he found at the top. I came suddenly into an open and boundless prairie. I could not see the edges in any direction. This was so sudden and entertaining that I forgot about the elk that I had been following. Clark had reached the eastern edge of what today we call 
the Great Plains. Wild grass as high as Clark's knees stretched out and blew gently in the wind, interrupted every so often by a hill or a grove of trees. That sea of grass stretched all the way to the distant Rocky Mountains, which it would take which it would take the core of discovery weeks or more to reach. Remember that the core of discovery is the group of people that were traveling with Lewis and Clark on their expedition. Oopsie. There we go. During those weeks, the explorers saw many plants and animals new to them. Meriwether Lewis was especially fascinated or very interested in the pronghorn antelope called pronghorns for short. He tried to get close enough to draw pictures of them, but the pronghorns always ran away. Pronghorns have incredibly sharp eyesight and a strong sense of smell to warn them of approaching danger. When Lewis finally came close to a pronghorn and got a good look at the long curved horns that gave the animal its name, he wrote, the speed of this animal is equal, if not superior, to that of the finest racing horse. The pronghorn is my favorite of all the animals we have encountered so far. The explorers were also astonished by the prairie dog, a tiny rodent. These little creatures related to squirrels lived together by the thousands in what men came to call prairie dog towns. The prairie dog towns consisted of underground tunnels that sometimes stretched out for miles across the flat plains. We have to catch one of those to send back to President Jefferson, William Clark declared, but catching a prairie dog was not so easy. One prairie dog standing on guard above its hole ground in the ground saw the men coming and chirped a high-pitched warning. Instantly, all the creatures dived down into the ground. The men dug down after them, but found that the tunnels went more than six feet below the surface, spreading out in all directions with emergency ex exits to escape their many predators, hawks, coyotes, and snakes, all of whom considered prairie dogs to be delicious snacks. Clark wrote down their findings about the prairie dog and pronghorn antelope in his journal. Still following the Missouri River across the prairie, the expedition moved on. Soon, they began to meet new tribes of Native Americans. Most were friendly and welcoming, especially one tribe called the Sioux. A few of the Yankton Sioux guided or led the travelers for a few days, but then said, you are coming to the land of Teton Sioux. We will not be able to guide you any longer. Lewis and Clark had already heard about the Teton Sioux. President Jefferson wanted to become friends with them. However, the Teton Sioux were not interested in trade with settlers and did not want to allow Lewis and Clark on their land. One September afternoon, John Coulter, one of the expedition's best hunters, was following the tracks of an animal. Coulter dismounted from, or got off his horse, to look more easily. Some Teton Sioux, hiding among the nearby trees on their own horses, shouted and rushed forward, riding off with Coulter's horse. Coulter walked back to the river and reported to Lewis and Clark what had happened. Minutes later, five Teton Sioux appeared on the shore, calling out to talk to Lewis and Clark. Captain Clark answered, we will not speak with you until our horse is returned. <clears throat> Minutes later, more than 200 Teton warriors, all armed with bows and arrows, rode out from the trees and spread along the riverbank. Captain Lewis remembered that President Jefferson wanted them to be friends with the Teton Sioux. He quietly ordered, stop the boats and hold them steady here in the middle of the river. Clark, smiling, called, we come as friends of our great chief. The chief that Clark was talking about was President Jefferson. We invite your chiefs to come and see our great boat. Clark ordered a few sailors to row him to shore in a, in a pea rogue. Um, and after greeting the three main chiefs, Clark brought two of them aboard the keel boat. There, he and Lewis were friendly to the Teton Sioux and gave them gifts. Then, Clark and the oarsmen took the chiefs back to the shore. Meanwhile, Captain Lewis stood ready on the keel boat's bow, and his soldiers kept rifles in their hands or right by their sides in case of trouble. Everything seemed to be going really well, until suddenly one chief shouted, Your gifts are not good enough! 
You may not return to your big boat until you give us better, bo better gifts. The Sioux warriors grabbed the P Rogue's rope and held it securely. Clark knew that the Teton Sioux honored courage. If he showed any sign of weakness at this moment, the Tetons might attack. Even if there were no, even if there were no fight, any chance of a strong friendship with the Tetons could disappear. Clark whipped his sword out and, holding it high, firmly demanded, "Release our boat at once!" Back on the keelboat, Lewis ordered his men, "Prepare arms! Only on my order may you fire, and not a second before." Instantly, the soldiers raised their rifles. In answer, the Tetons raised their bows and set arrows, ready to shoot at the core of Discovery. No one moved. The silence stretched out for a long, tense moment. Then, a Sioux chief told the warriors holding the rope, let go, and they obeyed. Clark told his oarsmen, return to the keelboat. One of his men asked quietly, without you, sir? I gave you an order. Clark said in a voice that sounded much calmer than he actually felt. <clears throat> As the Piro pushed off from the riverbank, Teton warriors surrounded Clark. Lewis could see only his friend's hat over the shoulders of the Sioux. Lewis gave orders, and as the P-Rogue reached the keelboat, a number of armed soldiers got into the P-Rogue and started back for Clark. But then, suddenly, the Tetons moved away from Clark. Clark's bravery had impressed the Tetons. The Tetons thought that Clark was brave because he stood up to them. They smiled in friendship and invited the members of the expedition to their village. The explorers accepted the invitation. The Corps of Discovery had survived a dangerous situation. What they did not know was that even greater dangers and even greater victories still lay ahead. And that is our story for today. What is the area called where today's read aloud took place? The Great Plains. What kind of animals did Lewis and Clark encounter? The pronghorn antelope and prairie dogs. Before Lewis and Clark's explorations, pioneer families living in the United States had not yet explored or settled the Louisiana Territory. Who had been living on that land for thousands of years? Many Native American tribes. In the read aloud, Lewis and Clark met two different Native American tribes, the Yankton Sioux and the Teton Sioux. How are their meetings with the two tribes different? Well, the Yankton were always friendly, right? And the Teton, they didn't start out very friendly, right? They took um, they took Colt's horse, right? And Coulter's horse. And then they were not very nice about the gifts. And But then how are they the same? Because in the end, they ended up um, friends, right? Which, president, which of President Jefferson's tasks did Lewis and Clark accomplish in the read aloud? Before we answer that, let's think back to what were the three tasks that Thomas Jefferson gave Lewis and Clark? <clears throat> so find an all water route to the Pacific Ocean, explore the plants and animals that were in the Great Plains, and become friends with the Native Americans. So in this read aloud, what tasks did Lewis and Clark do complete? They were looking at the animals and they were becoming friends with some of the Native American tribes. In the read aloud you heard, <clears throat> Clark knew that the Teton Sioux honored courage. I want you to say the word honored. Honored. Can you whisper it? Honored. Can you mouse voice it? Honored. Okay. Honored means um, to respect or admire. Okay. The Native Americans in the read aloud honored courage, meaning they respected and admired people with courage. Okay. All righty. 
So did we explain how Lewis and Clark prepared for their expedition? Did we describe Lewis and Clark's encounters with Native Americans? Did we demonstrate an understanding of the word honored? Yes. And then you are going to record information about the tasks Lewis and Clark have accomplished as your activity. Have a great day. Bye.